come here for this. Yeah. All right. But even if they don't, which I pray they do, we sure want to have a nice time regardless. Man. All right. Man. And you know, as we have our guest speaker this week from us, Anthony Norwood, that brother's coming from us from Gadsden, Alabama. Yeah. Right. He's going to bring to us the word of life. As we were talking over the several past few months, I told him that our theme this year is on focusing on the family of God. Man. So the messages that he'll bring to us this week is that we're going to focus on the family of God, but we're also going to focus on the lost. And in a few moments, our song leader will direct our minds and hearts in worship. So let us all enjoy today worshiping our God and Father. Amen. Just for those of you who do not know, everything that we do, this gospel meeting is going to go on Facebook Live. So Amen. for many of you who are familiar with Facebook, just talk to us afterwards. And whatever, this year I'm not going to do any sermons recording. We're going to do it on YouTube. So we're going to have two avenues of technology working for our benefit. But with any further ado, let us worship God in the spirit and in truth. Amen. Good morning again to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. If you would, turn this uh, regular hymn book, page 12. We'll do one, two, and five. Oh, no. 
And though I give my body to be burned, I have not love, it profits me nothing. The Lord has blessed me to be noticed. Oh, my name. 
in a moment you are about to hear the word of God be proclaimed through Brother Anthony Norwood. Yeah. As you remember, he came to us last year for our friends and family day. Right. I know many of you love what he had to say. All right. If you love what he had to say then, yeah. you'll right. love what he has to say today yeah. and this week, Lord. Yeah. Right. He comes from us, he comes to us, he and his wife Jocelyn from Gadsden, Alabama. Yeah. All right. yeah. That's not where he's from. That's not where he's from. He's from Michigan. Yes, sir. All right. All right. And he has several years of ministry behind his belt. Right. Well, but let me just read something to you about, about his goal in ministry. Anthony's goal in the ministry is to first please God, to first please God in all aspects of life in the work of his church. All right. He believes that a minister must be a Christian first Amen. and live as an example to the flock. All right. Brother, that's a mouthful. Right. 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 As we need, as, even as preachers, if we, we, talk, we need to practice what we preach. Yes, Amen. Amen. Right. And then those, it's easy for those who can, who are following to uh -huh. lead, lead them in. All right. Right. In a moment, he'll bring to us the word of life after one more verse of a song. And the next voice you'll hear that is Brother Anthony Norwood. 16. There's not a thing like the Lord Jesus. the road. All right. 
Right, but also, if you're a first-time visitor here at the Cherokee Church of Christ, I want to let you know that you are certainly our honored guest. Amen. And the red carpet of welcome is extended to you not just today, All right. All but right. 2 o'clock later today, right. 7 o'clock Monday and Tuesday, right. and 7.30 on Wednesday right. as we complete All our right. gospel meeting. But then perpetually, as we, anytime you see these church building doors are open, you are welcome. Amen. To come back and worship and fellowship with us once again. Yeah. All right. I'm going to take the liberty in a humble yeah. stance, as Paul says, everything that we have is by grace, mm -hmm. including me standing here in front of you, well, is yeah. by grace. Right. Right. I can encourage you, go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'm just going to reread this for my own purposes and also continue, as uh, Peter would say, to stir up your holy remembrance. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 and verse 3. I'm going to take the liberty and read out a new international version. Typically, I'm a King James Version man, but there's something in this that's irresistible that I had to bring to you from this translation that I want to give unto you from a clarity uh, standpoint. We have 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Somebody say amen. amen. And, and as you're going there, thank you also, the leadership here, for giving this opportunity to impart a word from God. The Bible says, and of course, we establish our context, God is talking to the Church of Christ located in Corinth. Our speaker, obviously, is the Apostle Paul through the Holy Spirit. And so he is speaking directly to the church then and the church now. All right. And so if I can say it in a different way, he's talking to us All today, right, specifically. Right. And so let's, let's read this for a moment. Paul says, which is God speaking, if I speak in the tongues of men... And of angels, but have not love. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. All right. Doesn't sound very appetizing, does it? Right. Sounds like a bunch of racket, in other words. Right. Verse 2 says, If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. All right. All right. Verse 3 says, if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. All right. So again, that's the rereading of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to verse number 3. The kind of springboarders are, are, are forward, we're, we're going to continue down this in later a later date of 1 Corinthians 13 for admonition. All right. But what we're talking about here is in line with the theme that has been going on here at the church for this year. That is, again, focus on the family. But right now, our subtopic is going to be phony love is nothing but irritating noise. Phony love is nothing but irritating noise. I know we're talking in the sense of the context being the church. You can also apply this to Father's Day, can't you? Right. Well. Because obviously, as our brother imparted to us during uh, Bible class, we have to lead that charge, don't we? Right. The man, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, is to spearhead the spiritual leadership well. Well. by word and example of the home. Right. So I want you to think in two contexts this morning as we study the scripture. First, think about it in our relationship as brothers and sisters in Christ as a collective body. But also think about it as a father that should be exemplifying these things in the home. Use it as the building block for things later on. Because if you don't know this by now, uh, the, the family is affected by what the father does. The church is affected by what the family does, right? They build upon each other. And so I want you to understand this point. So one point of emphasis, again, we need to make as we get back on track, uh, that needs to be discussed from my chosen passage is that Paul says in so many words that one can have all the spiritual gifts in the world, but if he or she does not have love, the good things we do are nothing but a bunch of irritating noise all right. to other people. Yeah. You see, when we do godly things and other good things, but our faith in our love toward others, then we do nothing but irritate those that we come in contact with. When we do godly things, and it's only because we want to hear somebody say, good job. Or we want a pat on the back. 
Do you think that the scriptures is true? Where it sounds like you're just big beating on a gong. All right. Getting on right. people's nerves, irritating their eardrums. Because why? You're not sincere with what you're doing. Oh, am I talking to anybody here today? You see, folks, if we're only doing things for a pat on the back, we're not concerned with really doing things from the heart, and, and we're just worried about how people would perceive us, then we not only irritate each other, we irritate God as well, right? Because God is the one that we're supposed to be pleasing in the first place, right? And he's saying if you don't have love, it's just like a gong in his ear or a clanging symbol. If I can add this point to it, our love, when it's not sincere, when the rubber doesn't truly meet the road, it's just like a dripping faucet. All right. Just drip. 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 Now, if I'm getting on your nerves, imagine what the real thing is. Just from that little piece. And think about that, though. When, when, when somebody has said, I love you, and you know the difference, you already know. That's just like a drip. Drip. Over and over. I don't want to keep hearing that. If it's not for real. Oh, that's what God is talking about here now. You know, like when you tell kids, you don't have something good to say, don't say nothing. Oh, amen. At all. Otherwise, what? You're just irritating the situation anymore. Anybody mature enough to take this this morning? You see, on this issue, Jesus said, according to the New King James Version, we look at Matthew chapter number 6, verse 1 to verse number 4, four very powerful passages of Scripture that's telling us be sincere. In everything that we do. I'm going to read it in the New King James Version for your convenience. Jesus said to us, his disciples, he says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men right. to be seen by them. Right, right. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father, Amen. which is heaven, in heaven. Right. You'll have nothing coming from God right. if you're not doing it from the heart. Right. Jesus says, therefore, in other words, when you have a therefore, God is saying, since you know this information, uh -huh. I want you to do this. He says in verse 2, therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. All right, all right. That they may have glory. In other words, they won't talk, talk to talk good about them. Uh -huh. That they may have glory for men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. All right, all right. God takes a transition with the word right. but in verse number three. Uh -huh. He says, but when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know right. what your right hand is doing. In other words, keep it secret now. Right. Well, that your charitable deed may be in secret, well, and your father who sees in secret uh -huh. himself will reward you uh -huh. openly. Yeah. Right. We already know. That God does not accept our giving if it is full attention and the praise of others. We're not all just talking about money. We're talking about anything. Any good deed. God is teaching us principles right now to apply to every aspect of our lives. He's not going to accept what we do. Again, if it's for attention and the praise of others. Because that's a bad motivation in God's sight. If you want to accept that good deed or giving, if you will, if you want to keep it in that context. You All see, right. that time is when we do ungodly things for other people, it, 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 that we do it only out of guilt, too. Well, then God also doesn't accept that good deed either. Oh, right. amen, God. Right. God is trying to tell us uh, that, you know, you don't just do something because you'll feel bad if I didn't do it. Right. Oh, do you get it? You know, he's, he, he's saying, when you ever want to do things, do it from a cheerful spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you don't see it right now. If I break down and I have a, 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 a something that went wrong with my car, and you have the ability to fix it yourself, God is saying, don't just pass him by because you'll feel bad for leaving him there. He's saying, stop because you'll feel good about helping him. Oh, you got it. Helping him. In the first place, let it be something that's not really an inconvenience to you, but an opportunity to show your love. Oh, amen, somebody. To show that you're what you're thinking is really a part of you. And you're not just doing something out of obligation, but because you want to do it. 
Oh, amen. Hey, right. hey, right. right. Let's think about it this way. Hey, for those that are married, since we're talking to father, we might talk about a husband for a minute. Can we? Right. 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 You see, folks, a wife, when it comes to Valentine's Day, our tradition here in America, uh -huh. she wants you to just think about Valentine's yourself. All right. She don't want to give you a reminder. Oh, you ain't got it yet. You ain't married. You know what I'm talking about. You don't want to give you a mind of Valentine's Day in a couple days. Mm -hmm. right. No, she wants you to come home and already had a rose petals. Oh, uh, you ain't got that. Spread on the floor and she didn't ask for it. Huh? She already want the candlelight dinner already prepared. She don't want to come home at work, you sitting there, and then, and then she say to you, well, where everything at? Oh, baby, I'm going to get it now. Too late. <laughs> Too late. It should have been in your heart. Well, oh, while, while, while she was still at work, while she was still uh, typing on her computer, you think about how can I make my baby feel better? Huh? When I get home here today. Because why? It was already in your heart. Did nobody have to tell you that. It's something you wanted to do. Oh, amen. From the very beginning. This is what God says, even though it's in the context of giving from a financial standpoint, the principle still applies. When you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 7, the Bible talks about every man according as he what? Purposes where? In his heart. Not nobody stroking you to do it. Not nobody persuading you to do it, but because your love for God makes you want to give him a little bit more. The Bible says every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God does what? He loveth a complaining giver. That ain't in your text, is it? A, a giver that regrets what he's doing? Huh? A giver that's going to fuss about it? When he does, no, that's not in the text. God says what? God loveth what? A cheerful giver. But it shows us that we do not give, which includes anything we do for God or others in need as an expression of our love with a grudging spirit or one moved by necessity only. In other words, God doesn't want us complaining when we give anything to other people. Right. Or to give only out of obligation. Uh, right. God wants us again to give out of heartfelt love for other people. Yeah. Not just because God told us to give. All right. In the first right. place. Think about it this way. When we talk about phony love. Anybody ever have a car that you struggle with? You know, y'all must be yeah. kind of bougie in here. I don't know if you ever had <laughs> what we call back in the day a little hoopty here and there. Yeah. See, the first car I had bled all the time. What I mean by that is it had oil leaks. Oh, amen. I'm glad he just kept going. He didn't strand me there. And so it bleed it black a lot, if you know what I'm talking about. The blood of a car, if you want to call it that. But, but, but you know, you always run into a situation where you have a muffler problem. So for every once in a while, you got to replace a muffler. Have you ever been behind a car that don't have a muffler? Oh, man, it's backfiring, making all kind of nasty noises, right? And if you're not careful, you're halfway listening, and it's behind you, can't see, like, there's a sports car well, well, behind me. Well, well, but don't get behind it, and you're going to find out that car fooled you. That was a car that needed repair, not a high-performance vehicle, if you know what I'm talking about. That lack of a muffler fooled you and made you think that car was something it was not. Oh, if you don't get it from that example. If, you, uh, if, if any pet lovers are in here today, my wife and I own a little papillon. And a papillon dog looks like a Jack Russell with hair. In other words, long hair. They get no bigger than 11 to 13 pounds. But you can't tell my dog he's not a Doberman. Huh? You can't tell my dog he's not a pit bull. Because if anybody come in the house and get on the porch, he's going to act like he's eating them up. He's going to act like he's some type of military trained dog, like he can do anything, right? And all a burglar has to do is just kick it to the side and say, go dog, go somewhere. And he'll go scampering off in the corner, whimpering. But see, the point is, if you're in the dark and you don't know no better, you might think a Doberman's after you. Huh? 
because why? He's a phony doberman. Amen. <laughs> he ain't the real thing, but he's making a lot of noise, right. but doing nothing. It's like the old uh, saying goes, he's all bark and no bite. Amen. So I, I hope you understand where you're coming from. There's a lot of things in this world that can deceive you, including our love, if it's not true. Amen. But God can see through all that, can't he? And if you if you got an intelligent human being, which all of us are, we can too. Oh, amen. Amen. And so again, as a family, we're supposed to do what? Love each other. When we do good things without love, we look like we're doing the will of God, but are not. You see, that's what Matthew 5, verse 16 is encouraging all of us, commanding all of us as God's children. What Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may what? They may see your good works and glorify your faith. In other words, praise God, because of you, glorify your Father, which is what? In heaven. Right. You see, the only way to show somebody the light that is within us is to realize that the light inside of us is the Jesus that is working through us. All right. well, let me say it one more time. The only way to show someone the light that is within us Right. Is to realize that the light inside of us is the Jesus that's working through us. All right. You see, All right. Jesus proceeded in love and compassion with the things he did. And as such, we should do the same things yeah. for others. Amen. Otherwise, our fake love will be nothing but a source of irritation, right. both to man and God. Right. Oh, amen, All somebody. Right. Right. So at this point, let's move on and discuss a different aspect of what love of God actually is. I like to use 1 Corinthians chapter 13, but I like to use it in a metaphorical sense. In other words, teach it like a parable as Jesus does. Does anybody in here love a diamond? Mm -hmm. well, oh, hey, man, I know y'all see some guy. Y'all speak up. <laughs> Sometimes we wish you didn't like what we say. It was a lot of money before we say, when you bear me, baby. Oh, amen. And so I know a lot of folk love diamonds. But you understand something about a diamond. When you look at the jeweler's showcase, they all have a different price tag on them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because not every diamond is of the same quality. Amen. And I'd like to describe God's word in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter, as a diamond. Right. In other words, is your, your love a cubic zirconia? Or is it a diamond? Right. And for it to qualify as a diamond, it has to have every characteristic that God describes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, we're going to go through several of those characteristics throughout this week. And we're going to focus on a few right now. You see, folks, when it comes to a diamond in the natural sense, there are four basic characteristics that determine its value, its quality. Number one, it's, it, 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 the experts tell you that a diamond's value is based on the cut, the clarity, the color, and the carriage, which means the weight. Now, if any of these things is out of order, guess what's going to happen to the value of the diamond? It's going to go down. If it has any flaws in any of these four things, mm -hmm. that means the jeweler cannot sell it for a high price. All right. Huh? All right. All right. All right. All right. If you understand that from the natural sense, ask yourself from a spiritual sense, is there something wrong in my love spiritually with this cut? All right. Huh? All right. With this clarity, with this color. And it's carriage. Yes. We're going right. to find out throughout this week. Amen, somebody. Right. You see, folks, the first thing that we're going to talk about, then, you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 4. Mm -hmm. The Bible says for a person to qualify as a loving person is that he must suffer long. long. Right. Oh, can I, can, I, can I take intermission for a minute? All right. Folks, I believe since we're family, family can talk to each other in a plain way. All right. Huh? Yeah. 
That is, since we're family, I want to ask you to do a few things for me. Right. Can we talk to an agreement All right. that we're going to only talk Bible and Bible only? All right. We're going to throw out opinions of what we think love is. Right. Well, we're going to throw out traditions of what we think love is. Right. We're going to throw out philosophies we've held for 30, 40 years in our lives. Right. And we're going to pick up the Bible and the Bible define our love. And the Bible only. Can we agree All right. All right. to do this this morning? You know why I'm doing this? Because you have to be on the same page All right. All right. in order to say we really love each other. Yeah. Oh, right. amen. All right. Like we should. Because if you go by your opinion, your love is not my love. Right. My love is not your love. All right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because we only got one standard. Right. Right. And it's God's word. To base all that love upon. Oh, is that all right, y'all? All, right, all, right, all right. right. Now that we have this agreement then, we're going to clear our minds of what we think love is yes. and turn our hearts into a big artistic canvas for God. Yes. We're right. going to let him paint his word right. all over our hearts. This is going to be a beautiful creation all right. if you're able to get a blank slate right now. All right. To understand what God teaches about love. Mm -hmm. So let's break down each element of this definition of what love is according to 1 Corinthians chapter, thir verse, uh, chapter 13. Starting with verse number 4. Again, God says, love suffers long, right? right? The King James Version says charity, which is the same thing as love, right? right. So this simply means that if you're a loving person from this angle of the spiritual diamond we're talking about... Right then you have to be able to control your temper yeah. and not fly off the handle All right. so quickly right. 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 and easy. Right. That's what suffering long means. You're right. able to control your emotions right. Right. so you're not snapping at other people. All right. You're patient with them. That's what suffering long literally means. It means to be patient with other people. Oh, amen, somebody. Right, right, right. You see, the moment that you start talking that devil talk, I just don't have the patience for this. Yeah. All right. All right. You already. Oh, y'all laughing. I know you're laughing because I done done it too. Amen. Well, I had to well. prepare myself for going in Walmart or something like that because one in parking lot, I'm saying to myself, I ain't got patience for this. All right. So by the time I get in the line, I'm already got an attitude. Well, amen. Well. You know why? Because I did not prepare my mind all right, all right. to go on Walmart. All right, huh? All right, all right. And so have you prepared your mind to love me? All right, all right, all right. Have you prepared your mind for me to love you? Yeah. Right, right. And vice versa. Right. This is something you got to think about ahead of time. Yeah. Not just at the moment. Right, if you right. do things in the spur of the moment, I guarantee you're going to fall flat on your face. Right, right. Spiritually. Amen. I don't know. No track runner. That just gets out there and he's, he's 30 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. right. What has he done? He's hit the weight room. Huh? Yeah. He's stretched out. Right. He's practiced for months before his first track meet. Right. So now he can really run right. that 100 meters and not pass out at the 20. Right. If you know what I'm talking about. Right. Right. Prepare your mind. This is something you got to accept now. Right. In order to get it right when the rubber meets the road, when you need that patience. And the right. devil's on your back, if you will, yeah. as you talked about in Bible class right. Right. Yeah. Uh, this morning. So again, this simply means, just for clarity sake, let me repeat myself. Uh, suffering alone means to be patient in the fact that you're slow to anger. Right. Right. You're able to take a lot of abuse off of others well. and not one that takes revenge. Well, right. You see, in other words... Mm -hmm. A loving person knows how to control his or her temper and does not fly off the handle so easily. All right. See, this is where we as the family of God, individually and collectively, have to ask ourselves some challenging questions in order to get what we need to get spiritually. All right. All right. First, ask yourself, how loving am I? All right. All right. Have you ever challenged yourself there? Well, it's not too late to start, right? All right, all right, God. We still got a heartbeat, don't we? All right, all right. We still all right. breathe and take it in and out oxygen, well, aren't we? Well, well. We still have a pulse. All right, all right. So it's not too late to challenge yourself with that basic question. Is that okay, y'all? Right. Right. Ask yourself this. 
if you're not a long-suffering person, which means you're not a loving person at this point, ask yourself the second question. Is my temper a sign that I do not have enough love in my heart when I mistreat to suffer wrong without trying to belittle them in return? Right. Or dig my claws in them so that they feel as bad as they made me feel? All right. Oh, amen, All right. somebody. Y'all right. sisters right. need to stop that stuff. When, when somebody get on your get on your nerves and talk about I'm gonna pull your tracks out. I'm gonna pull your weave out and all that kind of nonsense. That means you're not a loving person, are you? Besides, I heard some of that stuff cost twelve hundred dollars. Be nice to folk in that. Amen. I don't know why somebody spent twelve hundred dollars on my hair, but I never figured that one out. Anyway. So ask yourself. A third question. When our tempers are out of control, we gotta ask ourselves, is there selfishness in me that is causing me to snap at other people? All right. You see, folks, a lot of times I had to overcome this myself. All right. You folks, sometimes we just want to do what we want to do when we want to do. Amen. Oh, that's a tongue twister saying that yeah. when you're doing something, sometimes you just don't want to be interrupted. Right. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, they come back in five. I said I'll be with you. No, oh, you ain't got it. In a minute. And y'all husbands, since we talk about this, is it all right, y'all? Right. Woman. Oh, you ain't got it yet. Woman, I told you. All right. I'm busy right now. I'm going to tell you something now. Women have frying pans and hot grits. We never would have known. Amen. Going to learn how to control yourself. You got to sleep too. Amen. But of course, I ain't talking about no Cherokee Church of Christ with an amen, y'all. <laughs> <Come on, brother. laughs> you see, folks, the love in our hearts make us sacrifice our time, mm -hmm. our effort, right, right. and pride, foolish pride, uh -huh. right. when dealing with other folks. Uh -huh. Our love make us say, yeah. just like the great one that right. went to Calvary. Just like the Savior that went to Calvary. Oh, yeah. Just like the King of Kings and Lord of Lords said right. while he hung on that cross. All right. Looking at the ones that said, crucify me. Oh, well, well. Staring well. at the very ones that cast lot for his garments. Uh -huh. Staring at the ones that put nails in his hands uh -huh. and his feet. All right. All right. In agony for hours, he still had the nerve to say, Father, Amen. For they know not what they do. All right, bro. All right, bro. Oh, if you don't think Jesus experienced pain, you got another thing coming. All right, all right, man. Huh? Yeah. All, right man. all you got to do is read Isaiah 53. Yeah. He was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. He could not get justice. But all this was put upon him, not because of him, but because of me. Amen. But because of you. All right. Because he saw that we needed a savior, somebody had to be punished. Right. All right. So that we could be rewarded. Oh, and that's something. Right. When all is said and done. So if our Lord, the one that still said, if any man be my disciple, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me, can say it and do it. Well, yeah. I think we can deny ourselves. All right. 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 Huh? Right. Pick up our cross of suffering. And what follow him. Well, all right. What did he do? Yeah. Following him, he didn't belittle when he was belittled. Well, well, huh? Yeah. He saved when people was killing him. Oh, I hope yeah. you understand what I'm talking uh, about. Uh, uh. He never called anybody out of their name when they were spitting in his face. Well, all right. Huh? All right. And so if he can overcome that, I can overcome it. All right. Yeah. You can overcome it. Why? Because of his track record. Because he told us in Philippians 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. Oh, am I talking to anybody here today? You see, love will make one say to himself when others do things that are annoying unto us. If I'm honest with myself, well, I was pretty annoying to somebody else, too. Somebody had to put up with me until I learned how to shut up. Oh, I hope you, don't, you get what I'm saying here. Somebody had to keep their hands off of me when I was trying to put it on them. So 
somebody had to have patience with me that somebody did with me, I can return the favor to God Amen. by doing the same thing to somebody else. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. You see, I know I'm not perfect. I know you're not perfect. But in order to suffer long, we got to put up with imperfections until we're all perfect ourselves. So that means we don't got a long way. A lot of time. Oh, amen, somebody. To go and put up with each other until we all become like Christ. The way that we're supposed to be. You see, folks, loving people, they go to each other privately in order, as the brother talked about a little bit earlier, to settle disagreements we have. All right. With each other. Amen. Jesus tells us that in Matthew 18, verse 15 to verse number 18. If a brother trespass against you, go to him one on one, as I paraphrase it. All right. Don't go to your neighbor. Don't get a coalition against him. Oh, amen, y'all. Right. Instead, go to him in love, try to make peace right. All right. All right. of the situation because a lot of times we don't understand that many of our disagreements are because we misinterpreted something. All right. All right. All right. Somebody said yeah, yeah. that they didn't mean in the first place. Uh, but when, since we didn't go, well, I'm, let me tell you how this thing works. If you don't go to somebody else, Satan's going to come to you. Yeah. Huh? All right, all right, all right. You're going to become the weak link. Uh -huh. Oh, think about it now. Oh, can, can I use the scissors for example? Yeah. All, right. all right. I'm not picking on you, but it's an easy way to show it, illustrate this point. All right. You see, sometimes when your husband worked late, what is the first thing Satan puts in y'all sister's mind? <laughs> what woman is he with? All right. All right. It's called his boss. <laughs> it's called he had to work late. But see, the problem is you didn't call. Maybe your lateness don't sound like you, huh? Is everything all right with you? But no, she's sitting back and she's watching Oprah. She's watching every man hating show. Uh, Watch every woman call or a girlfriend call. I told you you couldn't trust him. Every man a dog. Huh? How many fleas you got yet? Yeah, before you gonna learn that all them dogs. It's a silly way to uh, illustrate a uh, point. The point is, it's not the humor in what I'm saying. The point is, is that. If you don't fill in the information with the person you got a disagreement with, yeah. Satan's going to fill in some lies Amen. to cause division between you two. All right. And as I preached you last time, Satan loves a two-for-one deal. All right. huh? All right. He likes to spread like wildfire. Uh -huh. Because next you're going to be whispering somebody else in there, girl, do you see what happened to Sister Smith? I hope I ain't Sister Smith in here. I'm just making up her name. Then Sister Jones got that information, huh? All right, all right, all right. Then, then, then Sister Miller got that information, right? All right, all right. Then you got half the church women sitting over here and half the men sitting over there and they looking at us like we crazy. All right, all right. And ain't nobody did anything, oh, amen, right. to begin with. Because why? We didn't communicate all right, all right, all right. like a family is supposed to do, right? And resolve these issues so Satan can't put no lies between us. All right, all right. Oh, amen. Right, right. To cause us to not love each other uh -huh. like we should. Right. So God tells us Jesus has a method for this, uh -huh. that he is talking to each other one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Don't smear each other's names behind the scenes. Right. Instead, talk to each other right. and work out these differences together without anybody else. Amen. But you, them, and God. All right, all right. Knowing about this. Well, right, right. Moving on. Uh -huh. And lastly, the Word of God says, now remember we're talking about our spiritual diamond, right? Uh -huh. We're still talking about the cut, the clarity, uh, and, and, and the carrot, and so forth and so on. Well, when we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 4, your diamond called love says, God says that love is kind. All right. Huh? This is a little word well. that has a big meaning. I look at it this way. Some guys tricked me a long time ago into eating a, a, a habanero pepper. Now, a habanero pepper looks looks uh, very harmless. 
Right. You're going about gay big. Huh? Looks like a little shriveled up pumpkin, right? And so you look at that thing, you say, oh, no, that can't do too much to me. I'm 5'9", 175 pounds. What can that little thing do? Unto me. Well, I tell you, I cut it, got one piece, that's all I need. And I, and I took and hid that habanero pepper under a bone of chicken. I ain't eat no bone. <laughs> of that habanero pepper. You know, what, what I'm trying to show you is, is that just like that little bitty habanero pepper packs a big punch, uh -huh. so did that small four little word called kindness. All right, all right. Being all right. kind Amen. packs a bigger punch all right, all right. than you think. You see, folks, it's more than what meets the eye. When God, from a Greek standpoint, the original Greek language talks about being kind. It's like our equivalent of saying today is that a loving person wouldn't hurt a fly. He or she never looks to cause any type of pain or anger in anybody else's life. A loving person thinks about what he or she is going to say before he says it. Right. Oh, that the new saying that's out here today is that somebody don't, a person don't have no filter. All right. When they'll just run their mouth. Right. Well, you better have a filter. Right. Right. Huh? Because God said, we're going to answer with every idle word well, amen. that we say. Amen. amen. And that filter better be the book. All right. huh? I'm talking about the book, the Holy One. Oh, yeah. All right. The Bible itself, let that be your filter as to guiding your communication. Let me give you some tips on that here today. See, folks, James chapter 1, verse 19. I, I like to nickname this book of the Bible the Get Right Book. Is that all right, y'all? Because it's dealing with Christians that's going astray, trying to bring them back in, if you will. James chapter 1, verse 19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You see, a loving person thinks the following way before he or she says anything to anybody. Right, right. He thinks this way. All right. Am I going to provoke somebody to anger mm -hmm. if I make this off-color co uh, comment All right. right now? Huh? A loving person says, am I going to make the person think of a sad memory uh -huh. if I mention this incident All right. or that incident? A loving person says in their head before they open their mouth, am I going to make other folks fight each other? Because my comment will create division among other people. And a loving person also considers this before they say anything. Is this the right time and place to make my comment? Because although I may be right, I may unnecessarily cause embarrassment and shame well, yeah, yeah. to come upon another person yeah. right. if I make this comment right now. Amen. Can I make a very serious example of the message right, going to be right. yours? Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 say somebody has a hygiene problem. You don't say it right now. In 